Hey guys, I was going through one of my old posts recently on my blog, an old tutorial that I wrote for learning with text, which was the old, uh, I, it's been around for about seven years now. I wrote a tutorial a few years ago about how to install it uh, on your own computer because it's a, it's a web hosted app. It's a web hosted program. Um, you need a web server for it to run. Um, so I put a little tutorial together just showing you how to install it on Mac, uh, Windows, or Linux. And um, it was quite popular at the time. It's been around for for quite a while. So I was going over it just to, to kind of update it. And uh, and I had this little idea, just a fun idea that I'd never done, never done before. And that is to put together a little screencast of my own operating system, Linux, um, just to show you how I, how I use it to learn languages. Um, but, you know, my own little workflow, I guess. Um, so I'm just going to put together, I probably won't do this in one video. I might just do it over a period of, um, I might just do a, a four or five short little clips just showing you, I wouldn't call them hacks. I'm not an expert. I'm not a, a I'm not an expert coder or anything. I just, I have little, little things that I do that kind of help me, um, uh, speed up my workflow, I guess, you know, uh, productivity efficiency hacks, I guess you could call it. Uh, so I just wanted to put together a couple of fun little screencasts. I know this will probably not really appeal to that many people. Um, but it, if it, if it interests you, let me know and, uh, and I might do more of it in the future. So if you're anything like me, then you probably have a lot of MP3, uh, audio courses on your hard drive. Uh, I have I have so many books that get sent to me by from companies or books that I buy and they all come with these uh, with audio CDs or uh, MP3 CDs um, and really nobody uses CDs anymore so I hate having CDs lying around. What I do is I extract all the audio off those CDs and I, and I digitally store them and the way that I do that is I use MPD which is Music Player Daemon. It's a a Linux music server, audio server. Um, I don't use it for music, I use it for language audio files. And what it basically is, is a, a server that just runs in the background um, and you can either connect to it locally or you can connect to it from from outside the house, from um, not locally. So um, this program that you see here is NCMP CPP. It's got a terrible name, but it's actually a really cool little um, uh, audio client um, that basically, I like it for two reasons. One, because it, um, it's super lightweight, terminal based. Um, you can open up multiple instances like you see here. There are three windows, a clock, a visualizer, and, uh, and the player itself. Um, I like its tag editor. If I go to the tag editor, you can see I can I can edit I can bulk edit tags on the fly, so I can I can organize my audio really really well. Um, and you know if I if I download a bunch of MP3s that are disorganized and or unorganized and um, a bit of a mess, I can quickly put them together so that they're they're in a usable uh, they're organized in a in a usable way. Um, I especially like this for Asimil because Asimil, um, one thing that I really love about the Asimil series is that the files, the MP3 files that you get are all named and they're all named according to the words and the phrases that are in the MP3. So if I play this for you, so you see what's happening here is, um, so the reason why I like ASML is because it's they're all named. So I can actually read along to, with this playlist as it's playing through, uh, and I can set it to repeat. So I'll basically just repeat the comp conversation and go back through that list, and I can just watch that conversation and listen to it at the same time. It's super useful. Um, I also have an i3 MPD module up here, Polybar module, um, that is connected to MPD as well. So that will also be changing as the audio is going through. So if I'm on a different tab, if I'm working on something over here, this is still showing up the top here and it's changing as the conversation goes through. So I can follow through the conversation no matter what I'm doing. 
Um, so it's super useful. Um, the great thing about MPD uh, is, like I said, it's a server, so I can connect to it from anywhere. I can connect to it from my mobile phone. I can go out. I can go for a drive. I can connect to my home server. I can sit out, lay out in my hammock listening to this. Um, I can connect to this anywhere I want. I don't have to upload all my files to a cloud. I don't have to upload all my files to a phone um, and use up all the storage on my mobile device. I can have all of my language courses on one server that I connect to from anywhere. In, from anywhere. Um, so it's really useful, you know, and, and as I'm... So I might be listening through the... I might be listening through um, this and I come across a word and I, you know, I might think, okay, um, first of all, what I usually do is I have a little a notepad over here or Vim or some kind of editor and, you know, if I'm taking notes or if I want to keep track of things or keep, or I might even have an Anki window open here, I can keep some words in there. Um, there's also this nifty little um, script um, translate Google Translate script that runs on um, on Linux um, called Trans, and basically, if I just put in Trans and then I put in a Russian word, uh, notice up here too I have the keyboard, so I can just switch over to Russian. Um, or I can use the keys to switch over to Russian, and let's say um, I'll pick an easy one. Let's say. Um, uh, Prosta. If I go trans prosta, it'll actually give me the translation here. Um, or I can just use hyphen B to get a brief translation. So if I use hyphen B, um, the flag B, it will actually just give me the English translation and nothing else. So, and this works for any language too, by the way, on Google Translate. So trans prosta hyphen B, it'll just give me that. Um, or I can. You know, I can do this, and it will just uh, it will just give me all the extra information. So yeah, really, really, um, this is really useful. This is this is how I organize all my audio. Like I said, if I, you know, I can I can. This is my Asimov Russian playlist, but I can create other playlists. Um, yeah, I have an Irish playlist. Might have a playlist for each. Um, for each Asimil directory, for each Asimil lesson, and uh, and I'll just play it on repeat, and and that's how I organize my audio.